What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. We've entered that time of the year that is not sort of our favorite time of the year. We have a new version of Android. Granted, it is in uh, developer preview, but we still have new Android to play with. And uh, I mean, yeah, it, does, it doesn't really get much better than this. So Android 12 developer preview one has been released Android S, if you want to call it that. But Android 12 is here. If you got Pixel phones, Pixel 5, 4, 4A, 4A, 5G, 3, 3A, all those, you can you can run this right now if you want to. I don't know if you should, but you, you can. Again, I don't know if you should. There's no beta. You have to flash this using ADB and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's here. So let's show you guys some of the new stuff we found. This is a first look at Android 12. Again, before diving in, I just really want to point out that you can run this if you have a supported Pixel phone. We'll have some links down below. It's developer preview one. Google is specifically saying this is for developers only, not a mass audience, not those of you who typically flash like betas or join the Android beta program and test stuff. This is not for you. This is probably rough around the edges. Lots of stuff potentially broken, all that. OK, anyways, uh, let's let's see uh, what we found so far. So uh, Android 12 or Android S. It, Google's focusing on privacy stuff. There are privacy permissions, security, all that stuff that, that's going to continue to be a big focus for them. Uh, but this might be one of those where we see some pretty big UI changes. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of that stuff's hidden. However, um, the guys at XDA were able to enable some of it. So I can show you some of maybe what's coming down the road. Uh, there's definitely some Samsung One UI influence in some of this stuff. Uh, but otherwise, there's just some subtle changes here and there that kind of a uh, quality of life stuff. So anyways, um, let's I feel like we should just kind of browse around for a second. So uh, here is your always on screen so far. Nothing here has really changed. Tap to wake. You know, maybe the media player has been tweaked slightly, um, but notifications, we will we will get into some changes there. I should also point out, though, that while this looks mostly the same here, um, it uh, some of the stuff I will show you will 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 take you down a road that Google might be leading to. So anyways, uh, let's swipe down here. So here is the new notification shade. Again, this is what it looks like now. I will show you in a minute what it might be changing into. Uh, but there are some changes here. I mean, the the notifications are so far, I really, really like the new styling. I mean, you still have the notifications area. There's a conversations block. There's a silent block. You you have a lot of um, the, the structure that we had from Android 11. Um, they're just kind of reskinning some things like this. This one in particular, um, it's from the athletic app. And I just feel like it's very easy to read what it's trying to tell you. And then there's a little snooze button down here. If you want to actually snooze notifications, you, you know, you used to have to like kind of do like a half swipe to get to your snooze. Um, now they're kind of giving you that uh, that could change. I mean, these are things that Google will likely move around. And again, if they flip over to the new UI, we're expecting a lot of this might really, really change. Um, but you'll see some other stuff here. Like if I drop this preview down, I feel like it's doing a really nice job of highlighting um, when it pulls in content like a screenshot from a story we just wrote in Chrome. You'll notice that the icons and notifications are all circled and some of them have colors to them. Um, and, and and then Google's also trying to make it so that if you just tap on one, it's supposed to instantly fire up a notification into an app. Uh, there, there are times like Twitter, I think, does this. Um, there's a couple other apps that like if you tap on those, you, you they kind of hesitate and it feels like they don't open right away. Google's trying to change that and it might actually break some apps for a while. So just be aware of that. They're trying to, again, still a preview one. So they're trying to get people to work on that. But otherwise, most of this stuff doesn't look that much different, right? We expect there to be some changes, you know, up here. Oh, and here you can see it's Android S, by the way. And there's the, the first build number. Um, you can see my notification or my media controls just went away. We'll try to fire those back up. But so the layout is the same. It's just kind of starting to look a little more polished. Uh, I've in, in just the day I've used it, I've, I've noticed that I just really like the look of the the way these notifications are presenting info. So pretty big deal there. Um, let's actually dive back into those media controls with media controls showing um, the same sort of idea applies up here that it used to it. You can make it appear up here. You have controls over. You can have multiple media players. If I had YouTube music, I could you know swipe between them. Um, you can tap on this to get into your different music players that are available. Some of that stuff hasn't really changed. Um, I'm actually curious if I long press. Yeah, it will take me into the settings. So in the settings area, there there is a new oh, a change here. You used to be able to turn this off if you didn't want it always sitting up there. 
in your quick settings area. Now they're letting you control a little bit more which apps can show in that media area. So if you don't want Spotify to show up in there, you can turn it off or, you know, like I have a bunch of other apps here. I'm not sure I necessarily need Prime Video like constantly showing up there or Google Play Books. Um, so you can turn those off. And then this kind of allows you to mostly disable that entire experience. Either way, they, they have changed that a little bit. Um, so we're going to get into one of the new UI elements here in just one second. So we'll dive into settings. So settings area looks pretty normal, right? I mean, they've updated the search bar up here. It's kind of that Google esque pill style search bar. You can see my profile icon and the, and the layout of these things hasn't necessarily changed. Um, that much. If you go into like, I think it's location, you can see in location, um, like the toggles up here, see these little toggles. Now they're, they're more prominent. They show you a checkbox when something's on. I don't know if you guys have noticed this in the past, but Android's toggles and settings have always been very confusing whether they're on or off. Now the, the check mark should, should help that. So they're doing things like that. Um, but the settings area mostly looks the same. However, there is a change we can make. And again, this is one of those hidden things. So we shall, uh, I'm going to go ahead and swipe that away and I'm going to plug in because we're going to run a quick ADB command and I can give you guys uh, access to this as well. This is a pretty easy one. Um, but if we go in and we fire up the old ADB and we run a simple command to just turn on something called silky home and silky might be the code name or the internal name for what Google's doing with their new sort of theming engine, which we'll explore more after this. So assuming that worked and I dive into settings, Look at that, it changes quite a bit. And this is where it kind of starts looking a little bit like Samsung. So you can see everything's been pushed down. And the idea here is, which Samsung I, I think was one of the first to, to sort of talk about was shifting things down on our giant phone so that they're reachable within one hand. So when you get to them, and we notice these in settings for, for one, um, big bolder headlines or you know, or headers for, for sections and things like that. But if we dive into, like if I go back into like that location area, see everything's kind of shifted down just a little bit. So we got lots of empty space um, and there's that that font again. So the, the settings area has changed um, to show sort of this style. And it doesn't look exactly like Samsung One UI. Like we have this new blue sort of shade everywhere in settings, which I don't know if that's, going to be a permanent thing or just something Google's testing. Um, but this definitely is an idea from Samsung. I know a lot of people are going to give Google a lot of hell for copying Samsung, and they certainly are taking from the idea. I just don't I think their interpretation at least doesn't look like Sam. It's not like a direct copy. Anyways, so this is um, one of those UI changes that they may be implementing. It, it looks very unfinished. I mean, you can see I feel like there needs to be descriptions for settings options. Um, it's very big and bold and in your face. I feel like things could probably shrink down a little bit. Um, things don't really work that well. Sometimes when you back in and out, the settings thing overlaps and it's a little bit wonky, but this is kind of where, where we're going. Um, so up next though, I'll show you some of those other hidden UI elements that have been uncovered. So we expect there to be changes on a, on a number of fronts. Um, the lock screen here, and this is just a screenshot again, courtesy of XDA. So we expect the lock screen to change. We expect the notification shade to change. And then we think Google is going to implement what could be a very cool theming engine where they kind of look at your wallpaper and the colors it has there. And then they may take pieces and colors of that to sort of adjust the entire sort of system UI. So you'll get different shades. And, and I'll show you an example of that in just a second. But um, to start, here is what the lock screen may look like. So the lock screen, you can see the weather and date have shifted into this top corner. The clock is now giant and a stacked layout. Um, and that's sort of all we've got. You can see a charged indicator down there, so that won't move. Now, this would be the state you would you would be in if uh, you don't have any notifications. However, if notifications come in, you start playing media. The idea here is the clock then shifts upwards, and then you have your content in the middle to access it. That sort of thing. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, you know, I don't know that I love the ginormous clock. The idea, though, or at least the thought here is that Google is going to give us some clock customization options. Uh, we, those have not been found yet. Um, I, I feel like Google's been working on those for a couple of years now. So hopefully those do show up soon and we can customize those in case that's you know not your favorite clock. But see how things shift. And then if you want an always on look, um, this could be what that might look like. So clock up here date and stuff, maybe some notification icons. This is where it gets a little Samsung-y once again. But anyway, new a new idea for um, the lock screen layout. Okay, so now we'll look at the notification shade design. So 
I showed you guys, well, I can swipe this down and show you. So here, this is what the notification shade currently looks like. Um, again, the layout is all the same from Android 11, but just some redesigns to the notification. But you'll notice this very, very transparent background. The transparent background um, in between sections does not work when you're like in Chrome on a website or in settings, you can see everything through it. It's not, it's actually not very pleasant to look at. Um, so the idea with this new one is that they kind of frost it. So in between here, this is a screenshot again, but in between here, this will be frosted. And this is also where that system level UI theming comes in. Uh, if you had like an amberish colored background, which we saw from a previous leak, it might take on this frost might take on sort of an amberish hue. And so it matches from that wallpaper. I'd imagine if you had a purple wallpaper, it would probably sort of tint that way as well. And these icons may change to those colors also. So there's some cool things that are potentially coming that Google is very much still working on. Anyway, so this is sort of what it may look like. Uh, if we swipe over, this would be the dark version. Um, and you'll notice Google's dark theme in Android 12 is not black. I mean, there are some options or some items that are black, but a lot of it is very much this, um, this sort of like dark, dark, dark bluish gray. There's just blue tints all over. Um, and this is another swipe down fully to get into your quick settings. You can see there's been some shifts around there. The brightness slider is sort of a big fat pill thing that you would slide, which whatever, just some theming differences. So this is kind of where we're, we're headed. Um, again, this stuff isn't active in Android 12 developer preview. Google's still very much developing this and working on it. So as we get closer towards that beta, I'd imagine maybe some of this will be implemented. We'll be able to test it and play with it and look at it, or maybe it'll just be more available for us to use. Um, but this is kind of what we're seeing so far. All right, let's let's uh, let's dive out of there and look at a couple more things. All right, we'll go back into settings. Uh, I'll just show you one thing in uh, display, wherever display went, there it is. Not in display, sorry, styles of wallpaper. So in this section, this is where we expect at some point down here to be a, a clock style thing. I think it actually popped up in one of the previews from Android 11 maybe, and then went away. And I think Google admitted that it wasn't quite supposed to be there yet. We think there'll be a clock section which will allow you to adjust clocks, including on that lock screen. Either way, it's not here yet. Um, there is a new grid option though, four by five, if anybody cares about that. No. Uh, let's head down here though to system though and go into gesture. So there's a new gesture. It's this one that says double tap. Ignore the screen animation. That is not at all. It's showing, that's showing the double tap to launch the camera. This says double tap and it's talking right here where it says double tap back of phone two. Google's been working on this since, I don't know when, at least Android 11, maybe even before that. And we're talking about this double tapping on the back of your phone to having you do stuff. It doesn't work right now. I, I have it enabled. See, there it is off. There's again, one of those new toggles off on double tap. I have said to open assistant. It doesn't, you can have it take screenshots, play, pause media, open recent apps, pull down your notifications, whatever. There's, it, it, it's going to be a cool little feature. Um, you can even request uh, harder taps, make the things work again. It doesn't work right now. They included it and I'm not sure they were supposed to, but either way it's coming. We'll, we'll, we'll soon have a new gesture. Uh, now, as far as other changes, really hard to say, you know, like if I swipe up in here, this looks pretty much the same. We think there's some other stuff coming. Like we might be able to open things split screen by app pairs. So uh, like Samsung's done this particularly on their tablets for a while where you can pair up two apps and launch those with a single tap and they'll open. Yeah. I, Microsoft's done this with the surface Duo already. This isn't a new idea, but we think Google's going to build it into Android um, finally. So then maybe everyone can take advantage of features like that. It's not active yet, but it's kind of behind the scenes. Um, we should get a one handed mode where you can swipe down and you'll get into a one handed experience where you would use your phone over here with one hand. And then when you're done, you could double tap or, you know, whatever you want to do to get out of that. So one handed modes coming picture in picture changes we believe are coming are if you have picture in picture, you can pinch to zoom to make the little box bigger, stash it off to the side. If you want, those changes are coming. Google's just not letting us play with those yet. They're all in the back end that you have to sort of enable if you know what you're doing. Um, some other things, we're, we're gonna get haptic audio feedback um, that follows, well, the audio playing on your phone or if you're playing a game like that, so you're gaming and there's whatever's happening and shooting and bombs and space shooting and whatever. And you could feel that sort of haptic feedback that's coming. Um, there just should be like improved media transcoding and more supported image formats. These are sort of the developer things uh, right now, though. Again, none of that's really 
uh, that's really available. We're, we're sort of just looking at a first preview of Android. So uh, actually, I did want to show you the dark theme. I forgot to show you that. So dark theme, he, here is the dark theme. Um, if we go into settings, uh, it still looks very much black in here. But if you swipe this down, and the camera probably won't pick this up, but it is very much a dark, dark blue and gray versus a actual AMOLED black. I don't have a problem with that. I, don't, I think actually AMOLED black's a little too drastic and dramatic, but that is uh, that is one of the changes they've made. And in those screenshots I just showed you, it's very apparent that it's more blue than black. So uh, anyway, this has just been a first look at Android 12, um, the developer preview one. You probably shouldn't flash it. Um, I haven't noticed a bunch of issues, but again, I've only been on it for a day. So um, if you wanna give it a shot, feel free. We'll have more down the road. Uh, we are Droid Life. Peace.